So what exactly is a sphere of influence and who should be in it? This is the burning question for many real estate agents and I'm here to answer it for you today. And by the way, the answer might surprise you as it's changed over the years. Hey guys, I'm Amber Joy with Influential Agent and my mission is to bring you bite-sized education to help you become more influential in your real estate areas as well as take your business to new heights. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so that you're notified anytime we upload a new video. So what is sphere of influence when it comes to the real estate industry? Now I wanna say first off that it's also referred to as an SOI or COI, center of influence. And simply put, it's the people that you have influence over because they know you. And traditional coaches might even go as far as saying it's the people who know you, like you, and trust you. But I'm gonna challenge that and say that I think it's so much bigger than that. With the online world and how many influencers are out there, there are lots of people listening that may not necessarily know you that well or even trust you, but that you have the potential to have major influence over. So what I'm going to do is give you the three criteria of what I use to determine if somebody is sphere of influence. So while of course you want the people who do know you, like you, trust you in your sphere of influence, there's also three other criteria to draw on to see who else to add to this important list. So if I have ever met you is criteria number one. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be that I met them in person. This could be maybe over the phone, over text, uh, from a new internet lead, but I've had some type of introduction to you that means I've met you. That's criteria number one. But number one is not far enough. We actually need them to meet all three criteria. So the second criteria would be, do you wanna do future business with them? So number one, have I met them? But two, do I actually want to do business with them? And although that might seem like a silly question, you and I both know that everybody that you meet is not necessarily your ideal client. So make sure you take the time to think about is this the person that I wanna be working with? And then that leads us to the third and last criteria, which is, am I willing to take the time to invest to get to know this person better in the future? This is super important because if you throw somebody on the sphere list and never talk to them again, they're gonna forget about you and then you really have little to no influence over them at all. So you wanna make sure you have a Sphere marketing program where you're contacting everybody at least quarterly. We use Sphere Influencer and that program reminds us of how to massage our relationships to get maximum influence and impact. And so when you're going through those questions, do I know them? Do I wanna do future business with them? And am I willing to put forth that formula that will help me to get to know them better, to provide value to them so that I can do future business with them. So those are the three criteria you would go through. Now, even though I've laid those out, I always get questions coming in like, well, Amber, what if I haven't talked to them in like nine years? Can they go on the sphere of influence list? And some of you might be answering right away, well, no, you don't really know them. Well, let's go through the questions. Do you know them? Yes. Do you wanna do future business with them? Yes. And are you willing to reconnect with them and stay in contact with them from now on? If the answer is yes, then they can go on the sphere list. If the answer is no, maybe you're embarrassed to reach out to them or you just know without a doubt you won't, then no, they don't go on the sphere list. Go ahead and move them over to the not met list on your database and you're gonna communicate with them in a more automated fashion. Now, if you're looking for more information on how to market to your sphere versus your not mets, check out another video that I've done, which is really more about how to organize your database so that you can properly market to it. So I'm curious, how do you guys define sphere of influence? Make sure you tell me in the comments below. So you can see by going through that exercise of those three criteria, you could actually add a lot of people to your database that weren't previously in there. I'm always shocked when I meet a real estate agent who's been in the business as much as five years and they reach out to me because they're struggling with their business and with leads in their pipeline and I ask them, well, how many people are in your sphere of influence? And they say 50 or 75. 
And that blows my mind. And that gets me to thinking, maybe they're thinking only past clients can be on their sphere of influence. When reality, it is a numbers game along with a relationship game. So you have got to grow that group. So yeah, you should actually be thinking about who is your ideal client. Even create a client avatar, meaning a person that is ideal for you to be working with that's out in front of you as part of your goal planning. So when I ask you who is your ideal client, a lot of times I hear, oh, it's a buyer or a seller. Is it any buyer or seller? No, we've got to get really specific on who our ideal client avatar is. What types of buyers? What price range? What area? What kind of sellers? What kind of personality do you prefer to work with? Uh, what kind of personalities do you tend to mesh well with? These are all questions that are important into you not, not only being able to service people at a high level, but it's also about enjoying what you do. Because the last thing you want is to get up in the morning and just dread working with your client, right? So the best feeling ever is when you really stop to examine who do I love working with? And if you're not sure who that ideal client avatar is, think to yourself, who are the past clients that I enjoyed working with the most? And what did they have in common? And then you'll start to create a client avatar. This is important for you to consider when you're considering who you're gonna invest your time in in the future into getting to know better in your sphere of influence. And real quick public service announcement, I am not speaking about discriminating against anyone. What I'm talking about is working in your ideal geographic area, price ranges, and personalities that you know you're gonna be able to serve best. Here's an interesting statistic. According to the National Association of Realtors, 70% of a real estate agent's income is gonna come from their sphere of influence. That's why it's so important that you understand what it is, who should be in it, and to grow it every single day. That's what we here at Influential Agent are obsessed with, is helping people with that sphere of influence category. So comment below, have you built your ideal client avatar? I'm just curious, and I always look at all the comments and love to communicate with you guys. Now, of course, in order to be a true influencer with your sphere of influence, once you get that list cleaned up, you will need to have a kick butt marketing system to be in front of them at all times, providing massive value. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, or heck, even share it with a friend today. But make sure you're commenting on what future videos you'd like to see done because I personally read every comment so we can make sure we're providing great content to you guys. Thanks for watching, bye.